we're just after four o'clock. Actually, we're five past four, so we, we had a good wee break there. Um, so moving into now notice of motions, and the first motion is from Councillor Doyle. <laughs> Do you have Mayor, a sorry. seconder? Sorry, Mayor, I, I thought it was uh, Councillor uh, McCoggan. Sorry, sorry Councillor McCoggan, on my sheet it is the wrong way around, so, yep. Go ahead. Thanks, Sandra, I don't know what I've done on you, but uh, that's okay. Uh, thank you. I'll take the motion as read. Uh, I think we all, or most of us, welcomed in. Sorry, John, could I get a seconder before okay. you start? Um, Councillor McGinley, thank you. Okay. Sorry, I got back now. I think we, uh, for most of us, welcomed the announcement from the Minister of Finance in the South this week that the government will now begin the necessary fiscal planning for Irish unity. And I think that's a very pragmatic approach by them in the light of what we all know has been. Uh, the Brexit debacle. We're, all, we're also looking, or we also would want the same pragmatic approach taken in terms of the issues of voting rights for Northern citizens. And particularly, and I know there's a motion already on the setting up of the, the People's Assembly, we see those three elements as, as integral. So we'd call an Irish government and would ask them to hold a referendum on extending the rights to vote for the president of this, the uh, northern citizens and area citizens here and the diaspora across the world. It's uh, unsustainable, in, my, in our opinion, that any area citizen from the north can stand as president and be nominated, but can't vote. So that's really what the motion's about. It's 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 tying those those items together. We're delighted that there's some sense being seen. And not leaving this to the last minute, that we're now planning what what unity you know, will mean on this island, uh, and for a 32 county Ireland, and doing that. But we also believe, in line with that, that the voting rights needs to also be addressed. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGowan. Um, Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Mayor, uh, and thanks to Councillor McGowan um, for for bringing this motion forward. Uh, the SDLP will have no issue um, in supporting it. We um, and the motion uh, talks about um, a number of different things, but I think around the, the the cornerstone of the motion is planning and preparing um, for Irish unity. Um, we, uh, there, as Councillor McGowan has said, there was a previous motion um, calling for uh, a citizens' assembly to be established, and there has been um, ongoing conversations within our own uh, Irish unity working group uh, around that uh, aspect. We have no issue with that at all. Um, and I have always said, and the SDLP have always said, that the only way that we're going to build um, in relation to Irish unity is to plan in advance, um, not by um, sending out press releases um, and calling for a border poll here, there uh, and everywhere. It's about planning and preparation um, and then taking that view uh, and that vision forward. So we have, we have no issue with that. And in relation to the, I suppose, the the key ask of, of the notice of motion um, and, and the extension of presidential voting rights uh, to citizens in the north, um, there was, I think, a number of different notices of motion um, that passed um, through this council um, in all similar formats, and the SDLP have had no issue um, in supporting that. I would agree totally with Councillor McGowan whenever he says, he says that it's incredibly hard to believe that anyone um, living uh, in the North could stand to become our nation's president, but yet no, couldn't actually vote. Um, for themselves, and I think that's a crying shame. Most um, other countries um, around the world allow their diaspora uh, to voting rights in presidential elections, and I don't think that Ireland um, should be any different. Um, I'm as Irish here in Derry as anyone in Dublin, um, and I should have a right, the same as those people in Dublin, to vote for who my nation's pre president should be. Um, and I think that this is a very timely motion in terms of uh, the preparation uh, for uh, Irish unity and calling on uh, rights and entitlements that Irish citizens in the South have 
are now extended to Irish citizens in the north and further afield. So we're um, more than happy to support uh, Councillor McGowan's notice of motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tierney. Councillor Harkin. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, we welcome the uh, motion and we'll be supporting it. Um, partition has failed the vast majority of people in this island on both sides. Partition um, and the economic order uh, on both sides of this border has failed the vast majority of people. Uh, partition has benefit, benefited elites on either side of this border, and the economic order that we have on either side of this border continues to benefit a tiny minority of people. Um, so the new Ireland that we want to see has to be one that empowers uh, and redistributes uh, wealth uh, across, uh, right across our communities. Uh, we don't have very much confidence at all in the Irish government. Um, as James Connolly said, it's always been the leaders of Irish nationalism that have betrayed the cause uh, of an independent Ireland. And I don't think we can trust Fianna Fáil or Fianna Gael or those who are aligned with them to uh, attempt to bring about a new Ireland that will then benefit the vast majority of people. What, what Fianna Gael and Fianna Fáil want to see is an extension uh, uh, of what exists in the south to the north um, that will protect the privileges and the power um, of a tiny elite. Uh, so when it comes to planning, it's less about planning, it's more about participation. Uh, participation by people who right now don't have power and who don't get the shape uh, what society looks like. So we don't want to see a process um, that's called planning that really is about the elites in this island, on island, on this island, either side of the border, getting to continue to dominate the discussion as they are right now about what a future, uh, uh, what a new Ireland can actually look like. We we think it's time for a united socialist Ireland. Uh, we think it's time for a border pool as soon as possible. Um, we think it's time to revive the, the uh, vision of a workers' republic that James Connolly talked about, a workers' republic that will actually. Um, uh, uh, lift the boats and lift the um, living standards and lift the um, of the vast majority of people, no matter where they come from, whether they're on the Shankill or the Falls, whether they live in the Fountain uh, or in, in the Bog Side or in Craigan, uh, whether they live in uh, the North or whether they live in, in Dublin. So we, we support this. We think an extension of voting rights. Uh, for the presidency of Ireland is part and parcel uh, of empowering people and redistributing uh, uh, rights, uh, and we should start that process now. So we're happy to happy to support this proposal, uh, and um, we hope that it passes. Thank you, Councillor Harkin. Councillor McKinney. Uh, thank you for listening, Mayor. Um, you know, when we look around the chamber here, there's quite a few which would have probably both passports, Irish and British. Uh, I do personally. I have no objections to anybody uh, wishing to vote for an Irish president. It's their right to do so. Uh, so on that part, we do agree with. But what I would also say is that uh, our party stated that we have no objection on Irish uh, on discussions in Irish unity, but it must be all inclusive and include everybody on this island. We will be abstaining. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McKinney. Um, Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Mayor, for uh, allowing me in. Uh, and uh, it will be no surprise that the DUP um, will not be supporting this notice of motion coming forward here today. Um, look, we, we, we talk about um, Irish unity, and it's not so long ago I, uh, and it's, I hear that um, they are planning down there, Mr. Donoghue. It's not so long ago since TDs from the Republic of Ireland were uh, on social media and on news platforms reading out that they couldn't afford Northern Ireland. So they must have had a gold mine or something down there if they're going to afford it. They've said many times that they couldn't afford Northern Ireland. Uh, and, you know, from a unionist perspective in Northern Ireland for Irish unity to happen, you know, I would ask Republicans to give me six good reasons why I would be content uh, in a united Ireland or what would encourage me to support um, United Ireland. We always hear this issue, issue in and around partition. We know it's 100 years ago since it happened, but just this remind ourselves, Republicans and Sinn Féin supported partition back then. And, you know, we talk about failures. The people that were failed in the Republic of Ireland were those from the Protestant community. 
and look when we go back into history and look at the treatment of the Protestant community across the whole 26 counties. I think it's abysmal when you see some of them were murdered, shot out of their homes, uh, some of their businesses burnt out, uh, their businesses boycotted over the years, and it could go on for a, for the, another hour on issues that I've read up on uh, and around this. And look, you know, they were failed, and they're still being failed down there. Uh, and, you know, I still, people are talking today, today again, the previous speaker talked uh, about, uh, maybe it was the previous speaker, but talked uh, about a border poll. Uh, I have no fear uh, of a border poll coming forward because I, I know the majority of people of Northern Ireland will not support um, a United Ireland. And many of those people come from the Nationalist Republican community um, who would openly say they would not support um, a United Ireland. And Mayor, we will not be supporting the notice of motion. Thank you. Okay, Alderman Devaney, um, Councillor Donnelly. Got a mail, good chair. Uh, look, the, the the latest the latest phase of of what I would call a counter democratic process is almost a quarter of a century old, and it hasn't dealt with the issue of Irish sovereignty. There's no mechanism within it, other than relying on goodwill of the British government. And I, and I was at a unity meeting in Letterkenny, and that's what the people in the top table effectively boiled it down to. Regarding you know some of the terminology here, uh, regarding I Irish finance minister, it's a it's a twenty six county finance minister. This this notion that we have an Irish president, we have a twenty six county or a free state president, and that's the reality. And and you know I don't take any pleasure in in saying that, but that's what it is. And a quarter of a century after the Belfast Agreement, the fact that we're sitting here discussing this and and about whether people can vote or should be allowed to vote. For a, a, an Irish president shows you the failure of that process. But however, I do believe that there is going to be change. I think, and I and I, and I would disagree with some of my unionist colleagues here. I, I, you know, I think there's a section of the unionist community who see that there is it is inevitable. Where I would have a, a problem is is that the, sometimes there's a narrow remit the meetings, and and you know that you have to be supportive of the Belfast Agreement, and I think that that type of, of narrow definition is wrong, that if you want to have a, an assembly or if you want to have a meeting, that you can't put in place that here's the remit. I think it should be open to everyone. And, you know, I think there's a section of the Republican family who would have uh, as much concerns as, uh, as, as some people within, as probably most people within the unionist community. However, having said that, from talking to people who were activists in, in, in referendums in the, in the Free State or 26 counties in the last number of years, and I think, you know, they were talking about the divorce and same-sex same marriage, they said that there was a huge benefit to these type of assemblies. So on, on that basis, you know, I think I have no problem voting for this, as long as that there's no, you know, uh, you know, there's no they all and, and everyone should have their say. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Donnelly. Um, Councillor Gallagher. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'll be supporting the motion as well. Irish Finance Minister, when he was in post. Sure, a member of motion seems to contradict that fact. But the reality is, I, there is a finance minister, and I welcome the fact that he's begun to plan financially. And what I do think possibly should be included in the motion is the fact that there should be a demand of the British Treasury for compensation because they divided this country 100 years plus ago and also going to Brussels for compensation to allow for the smooth transition. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Um, Alderman Gay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so the same Irish government that told us not so long ago that it would be at least 35 years before they could even consider a referendum on a United Ireland 
whether it be 16 years, 5 years or 20 years, a pragmatic approach would be to stop pushing the, these echo chambers and actually try to make Northern Ireland work, making it a more attractive place for all, especially those Irish nationals who don't want to see increased taxes bestowed upon them just to unite Ireland. As for voting rights to Northern Ireland citizens to elect an Irish president, if they remember correctly, the current one doesn't even want to represent them at something as harmless as an ecumenical service. Uh, it comes no surprise that the Ulster Unionist Party won't be supporting this motion. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Guy. Um, no further speakers in relation to the, the motion, so I'm going to invite um, Councillor McGowan to sum up. Okay, uh, a lot of useful comments there. Uh, in relation to what Councillor Tierney had said, I, I point out, and we, we will keep asking for a date as set out in the Good Friday Agreement. We will keep asking for a date. We know it's not next week or even next year, but we will keep asking for a date as we are allowed to, and we hope that that date, when it's set, that we can plan for a better future. And we believe this motion is keeping that momentum going. Uh, with Councillor Hargis, I fully agree. Uh, the sooner we we move towards a socialist republic, the better. Uh, in terms of some of the comments from Councillor Devaney and others, uh, in this New Ireland, there, you know, we won't fail or allow any minority. They, you know, we, we will protect all rights, uh, and that's a given. And there shouldn't be any fear. But when you hear people talking about uh, you know, let's have a border poll. There's political parties here today who, who've tried to implement a law called the super majority. The, the like I've, I've never seen or never will. Uh, they kick this can down the road. This is a democratic right. It's on the Good Friday Agreement. They asked for this. Uh, what I will say in terms of making uh, this, this part of Ireland work, we've tried that for 100 years. It doesn't work. It's failed spectacularly. And... Uh, you know, th this, this, this about trying to make this place work, uh, we've, uh, that's been tried, done. And now I think citizens on both parts of this island are looking for something better. And every time I look at what's happening in Westminster, sorry, I, I don't think any of, it, any of us want to be part of that uh, elite, as, as Sean said, and I have to agree. So I will add, if people are interested, there is an event in the City Hotel on the 6th of December an inclusion and reconciliation, and it's, a, it's answering questions that people have. So anyone that's unsure or wants to know more, along. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor McGowan. I'm going to ask Chief Executive to take us through a vote, because there are people who have indicated they're going to abstain, and people that will vote against. So. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Breslin? Against. Alderman Devaney? Against. Alderman Guy? Against. Alderman Hussey? Against. Alderman Carrigan? Against. Alderman McCready? Against. Alderman Thompson? Against. Alderman Wark? Councillor Jason Barr? Or. Councillor Raymond Barr? Or. Councillor John Boyle? Or. Councillor Michaela Boyle? Councillor Carr? Or. Councillor Cusick? Or. Councillor Dobbins? For John. Councillor Donnelly? Councillor Doyle? Councillor Duffy? Or. Councillor Farrell? Or Councillor Ferguson? Abstain. Councillor Fleming? Councillor Gallagher? Or Councillor Harkin? Or Councillor Heaney? Councillor Jackson? Councillor Kelly? Or Councillor Logue? Councillor McGinley? Councillor McGowan? Or Councillor McGuire? Councillor McHugh? Councillor McKinney? Abstain. Councillor Mooney? Or Councillor Norris? Councillor O'Neill? Or. Councillor Riley? Councillor Sinai Barr? Or. Councillor Tierney? Thank you. May I have recorded 28 for. Eight against and two abstaining, so the motion passes. Thank you, Chief Executive. Um, so, motion passes. Well done, Councillor McGowan. Okay, moving on to our next motion, which is now um, Councillor Doyle. So, Councillor Doyle, 
do you have a seconder for your motion? Second, Second Councillor Mooney. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Doyle. Much appreciated, Mayor, and to uh, Councillor Mooney. Um, this is a further step uh, by into to try and support um, people across the north who are struggling with the evident cost of living crisis. Um, homeowners in particular and mortgage payers have been largely left behind by uh, schemes that have been devised um, either at Westminster uh, or at Stormont. Um, but there is one glimmer of hope, I suppose, uh, if you want to call it that, um, in the form of the support for mortgage interest scheme. Um, effectively, what this motion is, is asking for is to acknowledge, of course, that um, whilst this is technically a loan scheme, um, you don't actually need to pay this back um, and um, unless uh, selling or transferring ownership of the property. Uh, but more importantly, for those people who are struggling, for example, and, and for many of our own residents who, for example, would be in negative equity, um, they will have nothing to pay back uh, from this scheme. But um, it's important to point out that the criteria uh, for engaging in this scheme at this at the present moment in time uh, requires applicants to be on uh, certain benefits for 39 weeks. Um, at the moment, given the, st the struggles that many of our uh, residents uh, are facing, given that there are um, pressing financial demands on most households, um, we feel that, that 39 weeks is far too long um, for anyone to wait for any kind of uh, mortgage assistance. Um, I've been contacted by a number of people who are using this scheme um, in the city here in particular um, who find it helpful, who genuinely want to see um, more help uh, coming by way of um, a renewed scheme from Stormont in particular. In terms of the latter part of the motion, Mayor, I think most members will be aware that a number of months ago uh, it was put into the public domain that land and property services had engaged with the court service to put aside more and more time to prosecute people who uh, wouldn't pay their, uh, or couldn't pay in many cases, their rates bill. Um, and whilst that might be the right approach for people who uh, can and are refusing to pay their rates bills, it's not the right approach for people who we know at the moment are down to their last shilling at the end of the month, um, trying to pay uh, increased energy and food bills. Um, so what we're asking for is that we will write to LPS on behalf of all of our constituents because court action is not the right way uh, to engage with people who are doing their very best to try and manage um, the implications of economic forces that are well outside of their control. Um, I think that United, as a council, we should be saying to LPS that they should be working with people as much as possible um, and taking into consideration that there are people um, who, for their economic future, rates are not a priority at the moment when it comes to some families that I know um, who are using food banks and who physically cannot feed members of their own family. Um, Dr. Doyle, could you bring your remarks to a close? Indeed, I will leave it at that, Mayor, and um, I hope that uh, members will support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Um, Councillor McKinney. Uh, thank you, Mayor Flutterson. Uh, we we simply support uh, Councillor Doyle's motion. I mean, it's uh, we would we would appeal to the DFC and the LPS to reconsider, not in three months' time, but look at it as soon as they can to try and uh, help alleviate some of the pressure on these people before they're driven to despair. Uh, so we will be supporting this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McKinney. Councillor O'Neill. Um, thanks, Mayor. Um, and people before profit are happy to support this motion in a measure that's going to help support people through the cost of loving crisis. We welcome. And like, you know, this is another example where we see profiteering having a knock on effect um, uh, with people who have the least who are continuing to have to pay more. Um, and like, you know, the consequences of this is that people won't be able to pay their mortgage um, or that, you know, people might lose their homes um, or have to go into debt. And like, you know, this is another reason why uh, pay increases are so important uh, for people. Um, and I think the, there's a real impact here on the private rented market as well and for students. Um, 
over half of landlords in the north have at least one property which is mortgaged, um, which could look, cause landlords to transfer the additional costs arising from higher interest payments on to tenants. And you know we've seen this. Um, you know many uh, people have contacted us um, who have been made homeless because their landlords have decided to to sell up. Um, and you know again this is why it's so important that there's a ban on evictions, you know, over the cost of living crisis, like we've seen in other countries, um, rent freezes, you know, to protect people who are, who are private renting as well. Um, but, you know, we, we support this motion and more, much more needs to be done on the cost of living crisis. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor O'Neill. Um, Councillor Kelly online. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to begin by thanking the mover of the motion and, and can advise that we and Sinn Féin will be supporting it. Mayor at heart, this motion seeks to mitigate over a decade of Tory austerity and financial mismanagement, coupled with Brexit and the more recent Shambhali economic and energy policy failings, which have all coalesced in these increased bank interest rates, which have led to this dire financial situation for people across our district. The blame for this economic mess lies squarely with the Tory government in London. People shouldn't be fooled into thinking this situation is anything other than deliberate policy outcomes. The Tory mantra of Brexit, Brexit, Brexit may have been replaced with growth, 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 but the UK economy is not growing. Not only is it shrinking with wages stagnating, but it is now heading into a deep recession. When the Tory government recently messed up again, banks overnight withdrew all fixed rate mortgage options, replacing them with variable ones because they had no idea what base rate the Bank of England would end up at. This left people with absolutely zero advance notice in terms of making any alternative financial plans. Each one of us here knows exactly how the recent rate rises will impact on people's lives, both owners and renters. Many monthly mortgage rates were just doubled overnight. And as a practical example, we were told only last week that the council has already had to factor in an additional £619,000 in recurrent loan charges. Mayor, the case underpinning this motion has been well rehearsed in this chamber and by Councillor Doyle again today. It is right in such circumstances that the Department for Communities should reduce the qualifying period for support for mortgage interest and extend the repayment period. While in post, Minister Harley was consistent on this issue and, for example, even while Hampert recognised the vital role councils play at the heart of the community by unlocking an additional £33 million fund to assist us address the impact of the cost of living crisis. But the opportunity to implement these additional measures and so much more has been lost because of the DUP decision to block the creation of a new executive. So instead of local ministers in place to make local decisions to address the economic storm, we are instead forced to wait while the Secretary of State comes up with a plan. And again, it is also right that LPS should look at arrangements around people in danger of defaulting during this crisis. There surely have to be options for families which lead to better outcomes than simply forcing them into court. Mayor, it might be pantomime season, but the ongoing pantomime at the heart of British politics is no joke. It is having and will continue to have a profound impact on people's lives here for years. I'm loath to even describe a glimmer of hope, but the only positive I can see through this mess is that more and more people are waking up to the daily reality that there is just no future in continuing to be hitched to English Tory rule. Gurm Thank you. Um, Councillor Kelly. Um, Councillor Mooney. Thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you to Councillor Doyle for moving the motion. Um, it's a timely motion, um, and we would fully agree with the entire content of it. But Mayor, I have a um, short amendment to move, I'm giving it to Theresa already. I um, spoke to Councillor Doyle about it, so hopefully it should be all right. Um, essentially, Mayor, uh, sorry. I need a second there, Councillor Tierney. Give me two seconds to read up. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Well, essentially, um, in the first part there, it's bringing on the Department of Work and Pensions, which is the UK parent department who oversees the, this, this, this facility. And secondly, uh, at the end of paragraph, at the end of paragraph two, you'll see it, it reads state as a non repayable grant. Um, well, I was looking into this here prior to 6th of April 2018. Um, this facility was a grant, more than a loan. Um, it was changed only about three, about four years ago. And um, looking under the the, 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 the actual deliberations of the select committee, the UK government at that time were saying that that uh, that 
using it as a grant was unsustainable. Um, but now it's probably timely now to look at this here, Mayor, just on the basis that um, due to the cost living crisis and what the local residents are going through, it may be viable now to, to look at this and they change this from a loan back to a grant. Um, that would be um, it, that would be a better facility to assist our local residents. And secondly, um, looking at the scheme again, um, those residents who are on universal credit but are working aren't able to access this scheme, which seems to me to be absurd. And that's the second limit of the call. So essentially, it's just the two parts there that I would ask for the call on the DFC and the Department of Compensations to have a look at that. And obviously, we're first reverse the first limb and to look at the, the aspect of, of universal credit. And the third paragraph, we, we fully support that. It's very appropriate ask. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Minnie. Um, Alderman Gay. Uh, thanks, Mayor, um, and thanks to Emmett for bringing forward this motion. Uh, I wasn't completely aware of the support for mortgage interest or at this motion, and, and I'm doing sort of a wee bit of uh, detective work on it as well, like um, Sean Mooney there. And I thought too, if universal credit, you know, it should be open to people as well that uh, are on universal credit and struggling. Um, you know, I've actually had a few people contact me about this this week, um, and they they weren't able to access this. And um, you know, it should be made available for all. But as for the LPS, um, myself and Councillor Dan Kelly um, attended a meeting not so long ago, and the question was posed is of what. Is your most important monthly payments going out of your family budget? Most days put down mortgage, groceries, things like that there. But we were told that it's actually your uh, rates bill, because your rates bill always needs to be paid. Your mortgage, you can talk to your mortgage provider, you can get help, even if you have gone behind in your payments. As long as you're paying interest, then you can work on that there. But if you're not paying your rates, they will always look for it back. They will only ever uh, come along and give you a new payment plan, which means you'll be paying extra. I recently heard of someone who had been taken to court, a businessman. Um, he had been paying what he could afford, and the judge ruled in favour of him. Now, they threw it out of court. The LPS had to pay the costs. And I think that was right, because he had agreed what he could pay. LPS wouldn't bring down those payments any lower to help out that person. You know, they really need to look at that, because people are struggling, and uh, people need as much help as they can get. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, uh, Alderman Gary. And I should have asked at the start, were you happy to speak to the amendment? But um, I'm assuming that you were. No problem. I'm happy to support <laughs> both the amendment and the previous motion. Thank you. Um, Alderman Kerrigan, online, are you happy to speak to the amendment as well as the motion? Uh, yes, yes, Mayor, thank you. Uh, hey, Mayor, we're content enough to support the uh, the original motion and support the amendment that's made in there. Uh, whatever can be done to try and assist people here, uh, you, you know, in regards to that, in regards to their uh, being able to qualify here for this uh, the interest support or in regards to the rates. Um, I'm minded that there are, you, you know, and of all the reduction of it, yes, ideally it would be better then in regards to a grant, as, as Councillor Mooney has touched upon. Although I'm just not, I know it's, it's just kind of been put on here now as this, but we're, we're content enough to support it. Uh, uh, there's no mention of figures, how much that's likely to cost. I know in regards to the loan, as it currently is, it's coming back. There's going to be a cost because the money's away for a period of time. But um, in regards to that, and again, just mindful as well that, you, you, you know, given our, our uh, position with council and the rates process and the detailed rates process that we're coming in to uh, at present, you know, uh, if there's great difficulty this year uh, paying the rates, there could be more so next year. Uh, you, you know, so it could, this uh, could be a far, uh, you, you know, we, we will have to uh, just be minded that members uh, consider that uh, very much so uh, when we get to that position. Uh, but I, we're content to support it. Uh, we're content to support both. We are mindful that there's there there is a 
there's a working poor in there. Uh, you know, maybe both a uh, husband and wife, and they're both out working, and maybe children at, at childcare costs, and and they're getting there's these things aren't really qualifying for them at all. They're not able to qualify this. This will suit some people here, and it, and again, thankfully there is something there. It's not ideal, and again, it would be better, far better than that thirty nine weeks reduced. But there's there's others in there that won't qualify for this at all, and there's no support for them. Uh, you know, maybe both out there, one working part time, one working full time, and it's and it's just not. Uh, th- they are really feeling the, the squeeze. I mean, the, those mortgage interest rates, you, you know, they're you you know you're up two hundred pound a a month there now the way it is. But at the same token, we have to be mindful that we 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 had a period where where the mortgage interest rates were at a rel- were at record lows. You know, so we, we've. Um, but we didn't. We maybe didn't appreciate it as much when we had it there. But there's just been a bit of a perfect storm now. But anything can be done to support. We we are minded. We can support Councillor Dodge's motion and the amendments by Councillor Mooney. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Kerrigan. Um, Councillor Raymond Barr online. Happy to speak to both. Happy to speak to both, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Go ahead. I fully support this motion, and, and I think I thank Councillor Howe for bringing it. But it brings into focus the problem that this council is going to face in the not too distant future when it comes around to strike at a new rate. This cost of living crisis is not going to end anytime soon, and it will be incumbent on this council to prioritise and possibly suspend some of their more established events. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Barr. Um, no further speakers. I'm going. Oh, sorry, Councillor McGowan, on the amendment. On both, yeah. Uh, again, I support support both. I uh, support the the original motion anyway. And but it's worth mentioning because we've heard a lot of talk here today that a lot of this has come about from uh, some turbulence, a lot of turbulence in, in twelve years of of what the Tories is doing in Westminster. And there's a political party here today who backed the money budget in full support and went out in press and media and said how great it was. And that's cost thousands of, 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 of families across the north. Somewhere it's two, four, six hundred pounds extra a month in their mortgage. Uh, and it's cost this council. The decision made in Westminster, we found out already, has cost this council, as, 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 as the previous councillor said, 619,000 in extra borrowing. So when people talk about the work on poor and, it's, and, the, and they, they say ah, it's costing people, the blame for this is with the Tories, but also with the DEP. They, they clearly backed that budget, which caused the turbulence in the market and scared the, the guilt companies who, who looked at the UK and seen them as a bad bet. So now, you know, and it's a good motion, uh, but this could have been avoided. And, and uh, you know, it, it's, it's nice to hear people supporting this are the same people who supported the Tories in Westminster, which caused a lot of this. Thanks. Thank you, um, Councillor McGowan. And I don't see anyone in the chat box or anyone here wishing to speak. Um, I've heard no opposition to the amendment, so I'm going to take the amendment as passed and have the substantive motion and go back to the original proposer, Councillor Doyle, to sum up. So thank you. Much appreciated, Mayor, and, and want to thank all of those who've uh, spoken. Um, I'd like to just single out uh, the city solicitor for his help in uh, making sure that this was uh, able to go forward, and that's very much appreciated. Um, in terms of the uh, amendment, I appreciate that, that Sean had given me a heads up about it. I think that it strengthens the motion. Um, ultimately, we're all here to try and help out as many people as we can, and it's important that people also on the outside, um, our constituents, see us trying to work together to bring about solutions. Uh, so I'm glad to see that there's widespread support for the motion. Um, as a party, we continue to bring motions forward um, and initiatives forward to try and help out people um, that we see every day that are struggling. I know many of colleagues across parties and, and independents are doing the same. Um, and I think it's important that we send the message out that we are working on people's behalf uh, during what is a very difficult time for everybody. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. And again, I haven't heard anyone speak against the substantive motion, so I'm going to declare it unanimously passed. So thank you for that. Um, moving on then to the next motion, um, Councillor Barr, Jason Barr. Do you have a seconder? Councillor Riley. Sorry, Councillor Riley, just um, get in front of you there, Morris. So um, back over to yourself, Jason. 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll just take the motion as read. Uh, Mayor, it is now nearly three and a half years since the site has become vacant. Unfortunately and regrettably, within that time, a number of buildings on the site have fell fallen uh, to arson. But thankfully, two buildings still remain, which are of great historical value to the town. Since this, and after many calls asking uh, what the Education Authority's plans are for the site, it has taken them now 13 months for them to reject a plan for an education or than a school provision or purpose for this site. I am of the view that these delays and dullering are totally unacceptable and are increasing the possibility that these buildings and this site will be lost for the benefit of the wider community. I am ASDLP colleagues Daniel McCrossan and Councillor Stephen Edwards have been calling for this site to be brought to life for the use of the wider community since the day and hour it became vacant. This site has so much potential to benefit, to benefit the local and wider community and the likes of a community park a community history and heritage centre dedicated to Cecil Francis Alexander and the Strand town, to which too many history throughout the years have been lost. This site could also be used potentially for the provision of the local rugby club and other clubs, including many other uses. We now need the Council to express their interest in this site and the Education Authority have deemed, now that the Education Authority has deemed the site surplus to their requirements and seek funding from the relevant government departments, which was agreed unanimously from the motion that I proposed here in Council on the 25th of February 2021. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Barr. Uh, moving on to Councillor Raymond Barr online. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I welcome this motion. Uh, I've raised this issue, issue at Council on a few occasions. In February last year, uh, uh, I organised a, a petition. That petition is now over 700 signatures. Last November, I wrote to the Education Authority asking them again what their plans were for the site. I was told on this occasion what I consider to have been a deliberate lie, that the site was being retained for potential educational use. Uh, that view is reinforced by the fact that the entire site, including the historic gatehouse once home to Cecil Francis Alexander, has now been offered for sale on the open market. I've always felt that there was a lack of enthusiasm or a lack of will on the part of Council to make a serious effort to attain the site. So I, I feel this is a litmus test for Council to prove they're serious in their efforts to provide a worthwhile and much needed capital project for Stavan by making a serious effort now to acquire the site. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Barr. Um, Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Mayor, for uh, allowing me in. Uh, and I welcome the, the notice of motion coming forward here by Councillor Barr. And our party has no problem uh, in supporting um, the notice of motion. We're disappointed that, that the Education Authority have decided to dispose of, of this property. And as um, Councillor Barr has alluded to, um, there are a number of historical buildings there which we would believe have historical value. And uh, look, the, the history in around Cecil Francis Alexander is well documented. And, uh, you know, myself and uh, um, Tom Buchanan, MLA, have spoken to groups who, who have a very, very keen interest uh, in the site and looking at it. Um, but um, at the moment, we're asking here to council um, to go away and look to see could we acquire the site and what terms and agree, uh, you know, terms could we acquire the site and look. Very, very happy to support that, but once again, disappointed that the Education Authority couldn't work with local groups uh, and around the other area and sustain it. And look, at the end of the day, we're asking Council here to come in and look. And as I say, no problem with that, but I would like to see the costings around it or if there is, is any attributed cost and what that might be. Um, but happy to support the notice of motion. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Devaney. I'm Councillor Gallagher. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, I, as, and as, as Trabah man, I am a bit supporting this motion. And I have quite a number of reasons why I'm a bit supporting this motion, I, I, which I will outline. Firstly, this council has been working for quite a number of years and on a strategic objective of providing a town centre park for Trabah. In conjunction with all that, we have secured €9 million Euro, and we are, as we speak, looking to develop the Riverine project. And many as a councillor, and maybe a, a few in here, I have worked on that, and our 
it's in Britain to see that come into fruition, of which it will, because there's nine million pound has been secured, and there will be other elements of that project that will need to be secured in the future. But that's what this council's strategic objective is in a town centre park. Secondly, over the last number of months, a number of councillors uh, have been doing a deep financial uh, audit of this council's finances. And that's why I'm shocked that this has come forward uh, by the SLP, because I'm thinking, has, has the council not been briefed by his council members? Because we're in severe crisis. And if we were to secure this tomorrow for a penny, it's going to cost this council thousands of pounds of liability. And it has cost the Education Authority over recent years thousands of liabilities. So I don't think that we should be, at this current time, taking on this liability of thousands of pounds where we're going to see the potential for cuts and services in this council. We're going to see the potential of massive rip rises on people that we've just discussed on the motion before who are facing real financial hardship. Real financial hardship. Trying to pay mortgages and then us coming saying we've taken on more liabilities down the road, you pay for it. And I don't think we should be doing it. And Mayor, lastly, I'm working day and daily in Strabane with people that are facing a real, real housing crisis. A real housing crisis. They're in massive points and they're on waiting lists for years. Why would this council take up, and for want of a better, landlock, the potential of resolving that real issue for people in Strabane for the need for housing? We need housing, Strabane, and it's in crisis mode. So this motion in front of us has got a three crisis modes that goes against this council's strategic objectives. Three. The River Inn project that, that, that took years to secure £9 million. Finances and the need for housing. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Um, Councillor Boyle. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the, the site, the old academy site, has much potential to be utilised for purposes of addressing social need. Our party believe the local community must benefit from the site, so we do need to explore the opportunities that exist now that the site is vacant especially given the site is situated in one of the most disadvantaged wards right across the north. My colleague, Melissa McHugh, and I have had discussions with a number of housing associations, asking them to consider the site as a potential for developing social housing units to meet the need of local individual and families, given the vast number of queries that we do get daily from locals and housing stress. Over lockdown, Mayor, a massive voluntary effort was made to open up access to the adjoining and beautiful Burn walkway. And now that the former site offers the potential to further expand on the beautiful natural environment within that area, and indeed, uh, because of the size of acreage, um, given the fact that we do have very limited um, pitch capacity in Straban, around sport amenities also uh, as part of an increasing and linked network of greenway provision locally. Sinn Féin are also committed to support the retaining of the Milltown House and the Gatehouse, which, as others have alluded to, is rich in history and the association with Cecil Francis Alexander and an irreplaceable piece of our local history and heritage. We do believe that a partnership approach with other departments and statutory agencies can be a way forward. I believe, and it is my party's view, that the site must be developed for the purposes of addressing local social need priorities that includes housing. There is also huge potential there for, because as I said before, the size 28 acres in total uh, 
play and, and, and facilities in line with the Council's play and pitch strategies. There are local sporting clubs across the town, and I'm using Shamrock's Hurling Club uh, as an example, uh, and indeed other clubs who don't currently have a hub of their own, and they also need to be involved in any discussions, regardless of the outcome uh, of the motion this evening. Uh, in total, we believe that all, in total of the 28 acres, we believe that all of the above developments are possible if collective work from the different departments is, uh, is uh, worked on this. And I, I take on board Councillor Gallagher's comments in regards to Straban's strategic objective in the Riverine. And absolutely, the focus has to stay on the Riverine project. Um, and uh, I don't believe that um, a, a community park or anything of that sort on this site alone uh, would be beneficial uh, to the people of Straban. As I say, housing at the minute is a priority for us as a party and indeed should be for the council also. Um, so we, we, we would be supporting the motion given you know the extensive nature of the acreage on that site and the, the coming together of a lot of departments, possibly, um, and somewhere down the road in the future, notwithstanding the, um, the financial difficulties this council has, we don't believe that the council could uh, manage this type of project on its own. So we'll be supporting the motion. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Boyle. Um, Alderman Hussey online. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I have an amendment or an addition to the proposal as an amendment in the chat box. Do you have a seconder for that amendment? I'll second it, uh, Mayor, because I think it, 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 it strengthens the motion so it is to, to go out to partners out there to see our different departments to see if they can help and support uh, and maintaining what every, everyone has spoken about here. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I speak to the member now? <laughs> yes, Alderman, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, I understand the concerns that have been expressed by, by others, and this is not something that Council can do on its own. Um, since before uh, education moved off the site, it has been obvious that we were going to come down to this at some stage, given the historical importance of uh, some of the buildings on that particular site. And even back in, in the previous Straban District Council, uh, it was being suggested, and I, I was supporting uh, that council should show an interest in this particular site as something that could be used to benefit all of the population of uh, Straban and the wider area around Straban, the Straban district. Uh, as I say, I understand the uh, concerns that folk have if council were to take this on on their own. And I don't think uh, that council should. There are potential partners out there. Some have been mentioned. Could it be the rugby club? Could it be the historical society? Could it be a housing association? But I think the way to develop this is to engage with those potential partners, see what particular uh, elements of the site they would be interested in, that they could develop uh, themselves. But that council would be the lead, but not necessarily the financial lead uh, in putting together a case for the community transfer of the site. I support the, the motion as it stood, but I believe uh, that we need to broaden that motion. We need to broaden our contact with the wider community to ensure uh, that it has a chance of succeeding, particularly uh, in the difficult financial circumstances that we all find ourselves in at this moment in time. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Alderman. Um, Jose, um, Councillor Tierney. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it's just in relation to the amendments. Um, I'm not totally against the amendment and 
unlike others, I'm not totally against um, having a strategic view um, on development at this site and for the wider Strabane community. But it's my opinion that this amendment actually adds a further burden um, to that amendment, to that original motion, as it's asking for the establishment of a viable business case um, for the appropriate development of the site. Um, so, is that amendment going to be allowed to stand, or sorry? It's an amendment that has been put to the floor. It's been proposed and seconded, so I don't see why it wouldn't. It... Because it adds a further burden to the meeting there yeah. under our stamp orders. Well, I'll, I'll take advice from Mr. Solicitor. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. It was, and it, it, it's a point which, in fact, um, considered whenever the amendment came in there. Um, balance. The view was that um, it's requiring the council to provide assistance, but not specifying a particular level of assistance in relation to that. Uh, the council certainly uh, can provide advice. Uh, to organisations who are preparing their own business case in relation to it. So we would probably bring back a further paper uh, to explain how we propose to take that part of the amendment further forward. Certainly, if the amendment had specified that the Council draw up business cases for these organisations, then that would have been an additional burden under 17.11 and would not have been an acceptable amendment. But I think the, the, the amendment has been carefully worded uh, to leave a certain degree of ambiguity in terms of the level of support that the Council is required to provide in relation to that. Mr. Um, Councillor Donnelly. Thanks, Chair. Chair, look, not being from Strabane and not knowing details, but look, I, I have concerns regarding this Council picking up bills and, and liabilities. You know, I think we're already doing too much of that type of stuff. You know, we look at the grass cutting we've picked up, we just rolled over and picked up that bill, some of the stuff emanating from the car parking and serious repair work that may or may not have to be done, skills department, a lot of duplications. I, I would like you to ask the this, this City Solicitor about potential liabilities for Council taking on this this uh, this project. Uh, I'm just not convinced. Of the, of the merit, but and I know you know I would like to see maybe a report, but that would mean the fairness. But I would like to see his brain and see what his thoughts are on it. Thanks. Yeah, uh, Mayor, through you, simply wouldn't be in a position to you know answer that particular question today. If a motion like this passes, the approach would be to bring forward a full paper to the relevant committee, which would set out that information in an informed manner, uh, which would allow members then to decide exactly the approach in taking forward the motion thereafter. Okay. Um, we have an amendment that's on the floor. It's a valid amendment. It's been proposed and seconded. Um, no further speakers have been indicated, so I'm going to take the amendment to a vote. I sense that there's a bit of discussion going on, so we'll, we'll take it to an actual vote. So I'll ask the Chief Executive to take us through the vote on the amendment. Mary, before you do that, if it speeds things up, we're happy to support the amendment. Just if it speeds things up for you. No, we'll, we'll, we'll take a vote. Just take a vote. Take a vote. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Breslin? Aye. Alderman Devaney? Aye. Alderman Guy? Or Alderman Hussey? Alderman Carrigan? Or Alderman McCready? Alderman Thompson? Or Alderman Wark? Councillor Jason Barr? Councillor Raymond Barr? Councillor John Boyle? Councillor Michaela Boyle? Councillor Carr? Or Councillor Cusick? Councillor Dobbins? Or John? Councillor Donnelly? Or Councillor Doyle? Councillor Duffy? Or Councillor Farrell? Or Councillor Ferguson? Okay. Councillor Fleming? Councillor Gallagher? Or Councillor Harkin? Councillor Heaney? Councillor Jackson? Councillor Kelly? Councillor Logue? Councillor McGinley? Councillor McGowan? Councillor McGuire? 
Councillor McHugh. Councillor McKinley. Aye. Councillor Mooney. Councillor Norris. Councillor O'Neill. Councillor Riley. Councillor Sinoy Barr. Aye, John. Councillor Tierney. Mayor. And Councillor Edwards. My apologies, Councillor Edwards. Aye, John. Thank you. Thank you. Members, all members who are present and voting have voted for, so it's unanimous. Thank you. Um, just wasn't sure that it was going to be, so just to be sure. Um, okay, no further speakers in relation to the substantive motion. So, um, Councillor Barr, if you wish to sum up. Thank you, Mayor, and thanks to everyone that spoke on this. I do agree with uh, Councillor McKillaboy regarding the housing need, uh, but this, in my opinion, and the party's opinion, must fall into council ownership first, and the hope that maybe then the site can be used for both housing and the community benefit. Uh, disappointed uh, to say, or to say the least, that Councillor Gallagher will not be supporting this motion today. Yet I know he speaks about the Riverine project, but in my opinion, why can't ban of two parks? Um, if you know future Forester ban, are you happy to sit in it and see the site go to rain? You are saying this, but yet you did support um, in the last council meeting one uh, one million pound to be spent on the city baths, but you can't support the benefit to this for your own town that you represent. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Barr. Um, and again, I'll just move back to the Chief Executive for a vote. Thank you. Alderman Breslin. Four. Alderman Devaney. Four. Alderman Guy. Four. Alderman Hussey. Four. Alderman Carrigan. Four. Alderman McCready. Four. Alderman Thompson. Four. Alderman Work. Councillor Jason Barr. Or Councillor Raymond Barr. Or Councillor John Boyle. Or Councillor Michaela Boyle. Councillor Carr. Or Councillor Cusick. Councillor Dobbins. Or John. Councillor Donnelly. Against. Councillor Doyle. Councillor Duffy. Or Councillor Farrell. Or Councillor Edwards. Or John. Councillor Ferguson. Stain. Councillor Fleming. Councillor Gallagher. Against. Councillor Harkin. Councillor Heaney. Councillor Jackson. Councillor Kelly. Four. Councillor Logue. Councillor McGinley. Councillor McGowan. Councillor McGuire. Councillor McHugh. Councillor McKinney. Four. Councillor Mooney. Councillor Norris. Councillor O'Neill, Councillor Riley, Councillor Sinoy Barr, oh, and Councillor Tierney. Thank you. I have recorded thirty four voting for. Two against and three abstentions. So, um, substantive motion passes. Thank you, Chief Executive. Um, well done, Councillor Barr. Your motion has passed. Moving on to the next motion, which is um, Councillor Dobbins. Councillor Dobbins, do you have a seconder for your motion? I should have out there, yeah. Um, Councillor Farrell, thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Dobbins. Thank you, uh, Mayor, and the ticket is read. Mayor, the decision by the Irish government to establish a redress scheme for private houses affected by Pyrotite and MICA was a very welcome development. We know that since <clears throat> the announcement affected homeowners, um, homeowners have been contacting Donegal County Council inquiring about the details of the proposed grant scheme, but unfortunately residents in Northern Ireland are, have not been eligible. Until recently, it was assumed that the Northern Ireland applications were only concerning uh, holiday homes in the Republic. But it has now come to light that residential properties, and in particular, uh, my particular concern is those in this city and district, have been affected by substandard materials such as the parasite and mica blocks. Um, Dura have said that they've had they have no role in the <coughs> issue of potential redress, even though they are the Department of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs. 
The Department of Finance in Northern Ireland has said that discussions around a potential redress scheme for those affected by, by MICA and Paratype in the North would potentially be for the future executive ministers to consider and further stated that regulation of the standards for construction products falls within construction products regulations, which are a reserve matter and the responsibilities is therefore UK Parliament. Chair, this is a clear case of it's nothing to do with us, it's up to them and to who or what department should be addressing the problems. So why <coughs> governmental authorities play the blame game? Residents in our council area are left with not only their homes crumbling around them, and please excuse the pun, but their very lives are falling apart. Mayor, as a colleague pointed out to me, I am not a construction engineer, nor, nor by any stretch of the imagination a scientist, but I have met just recently with experts in this field, and I am gravely worried. Canada are now looking beyond residential homes. Uh, they're looking at hospitals, community centres, schools, and the infrastructure. I stress that any survey should be done by a competent and certified surveyor. Um, so that that is my motion in a nutshell. I think we need to um, somehow point our residents in the, in the, and, and support them by that way. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dobbins. Um, Councillor Ferguson. Thank you, Mary, and thank you, Councillor Dobbins, for um, bringing the, the motion. I know she brought it to our Environment Regeneration Committee, and I was more than happy to support it then because I think you know, many families and many residents have been absolutely devastated by the impact of Omega. Um, many have been identified as our Donegal residents, but more recently we have seen residents within our city and district come forward within the media to say that they are impacted by it. Mayor, like Councillor Dobbins has laid out, um, I'm scared when that does come forward that no government department here is going to, going to want to take any responsibility. DERA currently aren't, the Department of Finance currently aren't, and I'm hearing from a number of people who are dealing with the current MICA um, research that there is concerns around other quarries, like Councillor Dublin said, in the likes of Canada, but across the north. So it's something that we need to get ahead of. It's something I think is, is going to um, be more houses coming up across the north. And um, I think, Mayor, it would be a sensible call for us to try and quantify it here within our city and district firstly and see what way we can offer those residents support. So we're happy to support the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor McGuire. Thank you, Mayor, for letting me on. Uh, we will be supporting the motion. Uh, we're a 32 county party and our position is 100% redress across this island for all uh, MICA, all, all issues caused by MICA. Okay. Thank you. Um, Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Mayor, for uh, allowing me in. And our party has no problem in supporting the notice of motion come forward here. Uh, I've read recent reports and around people who have uh, um, been caught up in the MICA issue and around the council area here and especially across Northern Ireland. And uh, look, they, they're still looking at substantial amounts of money for repairs to their house. I listened, I heard one story in around the, the wooden frame structure. It's only the outside shell has to be. Um, removed uh, and replaced, and it still costs in about run around eighty or ninety thousand pound. And I do believe, you know, it's a very, very worrying time for all those people. And look, Mayor, I'm not a thirty-two county person, so I'm not, um, uh, you know, where my view stand that there. But I do support everyone who has been involved in this, uh, and I have talked to um, people in Donegal who are caught up in, in the mega issue as well, and they have serious concerns. And around the redress, um, the the government scheme, uh, and and the con and around the concerns of the cost to replace their houses, and some tell me even the redress scheme doesn't even go near to repairing their houses, and they're going to be out um su substantial amounts of money. But uh, Mayor, uh, from our party, we have no problem with supporting the notice motion. Thank you, Alderman Devaney. Um, Councillor O'Neill. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and people before profit are happy to uh, support this motion. Thanks to 
Councillor Dobbins for bringing it forward. I think, you know, the MICA scandal continues and it was only a matter of time uh, before it reared its ugly head here in the north. Um, you know, I think we need to learn the lessons from how this has been handled down the south, which has been an absolute shambles. Um, and it's a real disgrace uh, that the Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael government, how they've handled uh, this whole situation, despite the incredible campaign by you know, tens of thousands of uh, uh, families and uh, homeowners in Donegal uh, for a hundred percent redress. And you know, this council has supported in previous occasions that call for a hundred percent redress. Uh, and we need to, you know, we need to make sure that this is handled properly for for residents here um, in our city and district. Um, you know, the different departments who have responsibility for this can't. You know, hide their head in the sand, uh, and we need to do all we can to make sure um, this matter is properly resolved, and nobody's home, nobody's left homeless, or their home crumbling around them because of these defective blocks. Thank you. Councillor Neil, um, Alder McCready. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, we support the motion, and we welcome uh, Member Dobbins for for moving this forward. I suppose one hundred percent full redress is precisely that. I think it's you know it's awful the circumstances that many people, you know, primarily in, in the Irish Republic, but evidently now uh, those in Northern Ireland find themselves in. Uh, it's reprehensible, and if we can give any support towards that, we can. Uh, but in line with with good governance and due diligence, can I just ask a, a couple of questions, please, specifically on uh, have we got the capacity at the moment within our existing budgets? Clearly, rates is being discussed. Um, everything adds up. Nothing's for free. Can, can we absorb the the task within? Uh, this motion with regards to the quantifying the number within our council area is that fairly low impact on on personnel uh, and secondly and probably more importantly is when we get this information what are we going to do with it you know who do we give it to and how do we follow that through so that the, the work that we do and have identified uh, so that those people can be recompensed or redressed uh, by the relevant uh, you know agencies that are responsible and but other than that, there, apart from the, the governance type questions, uh, happy to support uh, and to get these people in a better set of uh, situations than they find themselves in now. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman McCready. Um, I don't have any further speakers indicating at, at this time. All those issues that you have raised there will be brought back in a paper should the motion pass. Um, so I'm now going to go back to... Um, Angela, for uh, to allow her to sum up. Thank you, um, Mayor. Uh, yeah, just to say thanks for everyone. And yes, I do understand where um, Member McCready is coming from with the 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 cost. How much is this going to cost and everything else? But um, define cost. You know, when there's people out there that are basically living. Um, within hotels or temporary accommodation, paying rent um, while they're home. Uh, every man's home is their castle, be it a, a, a hovel or, or a mansion. And this is what we've got to remember, that these are, as as clearly stated, they're, it is residents of our area. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Dobbins, and it is a motion that I would always support in terms of I brought the motion last year in terms of 100% redress for um, the homes in Donegal and the, the holiday homes that have been affected. So um, it's good to see this motion coming today in one way, but in another, I suppose not in the fact that it is affecting our council area. Um, but I, I don't believe that there has anybody that has spoken against the motion. So I'm going to take it as um, unanimous. So thank you, Councillor Dobbins. Um, moving on to the next motion, which is Councillor Ferguson and Councillor Riley to move. Um, I'll go to Councillor Ferguson first. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. I'll take the motion as read. I want to thank, thank by start by thanking Councillor Riley for seconding this motion, as we felt it was a tribute to the original proposer, Councillor Bill Keys from the SDLP and the Old Dairy City Council. It was then taken on by the then Minister of State, Adam Butler MP, and was credited for the creation of over a thousand new self-employed businesses across Northern Ireland. And this was cost neutral to the government. 
The Enterprise Alliance was for anyone who was in the receipt of unemployment benefits to apply to. It was increasingly flexible and compassionate. The applicant would agree to set up a self-employed business and earn money. The applicant opened a business bank account and used this for all the earnings and expenses. Whilst they were setting up the business, they were allowed to stay within the receipt of their unemployment benefit and they were able to keep that for six months. At the end of the six months, the applicant was then asked whether they thought the business was viable or they had a choice to continue to stay on unemployment benefit with no penalty or change over, um, or then they could actually choose to become fully self-employed. It has been reliably claimed that civil servants who were involved in it have said that over a thousand jobs were created across this, which then had a uh, knock-on effect of new jobs being created for other low-down employees. And in trying to tackle the immediate cost of living crisis we are currently experiencing, I think we need to look at initiatives like this that has worked in the past. This could be adapted to include people who are currently trapped in low paid or insecure employment. It could also be adapted to include short term or medium term tax breaks for the likes of SMEs that are struggling to reinvest or, or um, which are in their crucial early stages. So, Mayor, I hope that something like this simple motion where we just write off to the Ireland, Northern Ireland office and the Department of Economy and the Department of Community to encourage them to introduce an updated version of this will help and uh, will help with a positive state step forward in growing our economy with schemes like this. And I hope that this chamber will support this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ferguson, Councillor Riley. Uh, thanks, Mayor, for bringing me in. And can I start by thanking Councillor Ferguson for uh, uh, for proposing this and, and allowing us the opportunity uh, to second it, as she's outlined in her uh, uh, earlier remarks, uh, Councillor Billy Key served this legacy council of Derry City Council uh, in uh, some of the worst years of the troubles and the harsh economic climate of the Thatcher years. Uh, and during that time, he pushed a positive economic and civic agenda uh, as a public representative and in all his work to encourage enterprise. He proved his regard for others and his belief for uh, the betterment of all of our city. Uh, and he, in his role in fostering small business, uh, established the Euro Centre West, uh, supporting uh, sport and youth work uh, and promoting community relations and a strong civic agenda through difficult times. And I think that's well appreciated. And his, uh, his family, who I know well, um, you know, uh, mourn his loss when he passed away in, in 2014 uh, and the, the contribution to this, the city uh, um, at that time uh, when he was on this council uh, in terms of advancing small businesses and, and promoting uh, the opportunities for those that are uh, that were unemployed uh, is not forgotten. Um, I think that in terms of uh, the the motion that's here this evening for us to debate, uh, we don't need to look at uh, the NISR report uh, published uh, last week uh, in relation to their labour market uh, reports in terms of economic inactivity, uh, which fluctuates around 28 uh, percent, but that is far higher than uh, other regions. Uh, and certainly in terms of uh, Northern Ireland, we all know that Derry is all too often at the wrong end of the league tables in respect of that. So any assistance, any uh, opportunities that can be given to people uh, to help get themselves out of unemployment uh, is, to be, is to be welcomed. And I know that uh, in the Assembly, my colleague uh, Sinead O'Gotland, MLA, has repeatedly uh, raised the needs for investment in skills uh, and, and we've been seeing that in terms of uh, the, 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 the need for uh, a proper skills uh, strategy coming from the executive. Uh, obviously we now no longer have a uh, functioning assembly and ministers so I think that it is incumbent on this council to do all that it can uh, to push uh, the likes of the organisations and the public bodies mentioned in the motion uh, to try and deliver uh, improvements for people uh, and get uh, those citizens uh, out of unemployment and to tackle uh, that really stubborn uh, rate of 28% of economic inactivity that is driving uh, people um, into poverty and not allowing them to grow and develop out of it. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Reddy. Um, Councillor McGowan? Again, we will be uh, supporting the motion, uh, and it's a very good motion. I worked for 20 years in that sector. In fact, Paul Keyes was on my board for 10 years, so I'm, I'm very aware of that programme and the, the New Deal steps to work. But again, just put that in context, there was a decision taken not to run that programme, and it was taken by the Department for Economy. 
And the reasons, it's up to them to explain, but there's a huge hole in their budget. And it's not just affecting initiatives like this, it's affecting many other European funded projects right across this district. Uh, it's nearly uh, economic vandalism, you could call it, in terms of, of what, what is available. Now, if you are on benefits and you want to start a business, because what this did, it, it allowed people to start a business, keep their benefits and grow it to a level where they then could come off benefits. And it was just taken away, uh, no explanation. So it's a very good motion. Uh, we'll be supporting it. There is a scheme called the Advisory Discretion Fund. It's similar, but it's not. Uh, we could look at that. The government could look at that, but it's up to the Department of the Economy. And the reality is the back Brexit, there's a hundred million hole plus in their budget. And you're probably going to be told that there's no money to do it, but it is a really worthwhile scheme and it helped thousands of people start their business. So we'd be supporting it. Thank you. Um, Alderman McCready. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We fully support the motion. Uh, nice touch from Member Ferguson linking in with, uh, with, with, the, with Member Riley. And we support it because it's, it's not easy uh, getting employment. And it's even harder trying to be self-employed. And you've got this spectrum, whether you're a socialist or a capitalist, is, is largely irrelevant when you're you're trying to make ends meet at some time, you know, at, at, at the bottom of the ladder, if you will. And that transition from unemployment and the employment, and then that transition again to self-employment, to owning a business, and then sometime in the future they they may be an investor. And you know, each stage has has ups and downs, but one of the most riskiest aspects of, of of going your own, following your dreams, innovative ideas, and you know that kind of enterprise mindset is the self-employment. So you still have to do everything a business does, but you're just not mature enough yet. You have to incubate. You know, so you know some people when they look at it and go, "Well, hang on, you can't be on uh, a benefit, but yet be self-employed and be turning over." Well, it's not as simple as that, and it's been clearly outlined there by, you know, by previous speakers that you know once the self-employed a person, then they still have to cover their startup costs. They still have to have some overheads um, and they're taking risk. So by the end of their trading week, they may not even have enough money to pay themselves. And it's that transitional gap, which is this uh, program would focus on. You know, the Enterprise Alliance Scheme fits that bill. And it may seem as a cost, you know, if the Department for Economy don't fund it, you know, that's on them. But it's very small minded. It's short term thinking. If you've got something like this and one of these people end up growing that self-employment, getting off that benefit system or this uh, enterprise allowance scheme, and they go on to, to have a successful business in five years, they employ three to five, maybe 10 people. So that in itself is microeconomics with this scheme, but linking in the macroeconomics uh, in the city and district and the Northwest region. So, you know, I, I don't understand why you know this hasn't been funded and you know, in the way you can scope the likes of Invest NI, the Chamber of Commerce, or any other kind of stakeholder outside of the the, the vacant, non-existent uh, government departments that we have, or, or ministerial dereliction of duties, you know, it still can be delivered. We just got to get behind it. And us as a local authority, you know, given that stamp of approval, then that would certainly take the risk from other stakeholders of partnering up with us. Well done to the movers. Well done to the the initiative here. Fully behind it, and well done. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Um, Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Mayor, for allowing me in. And our party has no problem in supporting the notice of motion here. Uh, look, uh, uh, as the previous speaker has said, it is always difficult when you're on benefits and you take an idea of um, creating a, a business. And look, uh, sometimes the businesses, big businesses, grow from small elements like that there, from a small seat and grows and then creates employment. Uh, and, and creates a bit of wealth then around that. Um, look, uh, I, I, and I look across the, the council area, and I do hear many businesses would turn around and say, look, um, we have jobs, um, but um, we have nobody to fill them, which causes me concern. And, run around, and around that skill strategy, I have always been of the opinion, we should, you know, we should be advertising our skills to secondary level um uh, those in education and secondary level because you know they need to be getting the right courses um to fulfill their their career and you know that's where i think the skill strategy should be in there you know 
pushing them down the avenue where there is employment because if there is a certain skill that somebody wants to do and it's over packed uh, 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 too many in it and you know we're looking for nurses at the moment you know that's another skill um, but a lot of it mayor uh, is around um, the, the help of um, startup businesses and getting people that leg up to get the business started but we have no problem Chief mayor and uh, supporting the notice of motion Thank you, Aldrin. Um, Councillor Harkin. Thanks, Mayor. Yeah, we'll be happy to support this. Look, the reality is, um, you know, in, in response to uh, Alderman McCready, uh, capitalism uh, benefits at the end of the day, the people at the top. Um, we want to see more support for uh, people who are, uh, you know, trying to, get, to move forward. Um, and this is one of the ways that that, that could be, uh, that, uh, that, that can be enhanced. Right now, we're seeing uh, a lot of small businesses going to the wall because at the end of the day, government is not putting any measures in place to help them. Uh, that's going to have a huge impact on jobs. It's going to, uh, you know, it's going to push a lot of family businesses to the wall. Uh, we don't think there should just that the only uh, the big companies, big corporations should be prioritised. Uh, so we want to see people helped, and this is one of the measures that can actually do that. Thank you. Um, I have no further speakers, um, so I'm going to go back to Councillor Ferguson to sum up. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for the everyone who's spoken in support of the motion, um, and thank you again to Councillor Riley for uh, seconding the motion and, and uh, doing it jointly with me. Um, Mayor, I think this we have an untapped resource here within our city and district. We've seen through the likes of the pandemic that many small businesses were able to grow when people had the time and the space to actually use their imagination and what they wanted. A lot of people don't want to take that leap because they don't have that security. If it doesn't go through, then if it fails, then they'll end up being persecuted or lose out on their benefits. That's why this scheme works. This scheme allows that bit of space. It allows that bit of time to, to grow within the first six months and, and and we've seen that it has worked and with every SME that is grown there will be a trickle down where there'll be more employers and there'll be more uh, sorry, employees and more people in jobs so it works, we're, we're a, a whole country full of SMEs we, we don't have huge big businesses coming over here all the time, we have small businesses homegrown so this is a way in which that we can actually grow more of them and more inspiration across our city and district so happy that everybody has spoken in support and look forward to it being hopefully unanimously supported sorry Thank you Councillor Ferguson and again I haven't had anybody speaking against that so I'm going to decide that that is also unanimous so thank you um, Councillor Riley on to yourself do you have a seconder for your motion Councillor Tierney okay go ahead uh, thank you, Mayor. And I'll take the motion as read on the screen. Uh, Mayor, in the absence of a functioning assembly, as we said in the last motion, uh, it is incumbent that uh, local government does all it can uh, to help people uh, during this cost of living crisis. Uh, that's why I've tabled this motion to ask that the council, through your office uh, in the Mayor's office, uh, convene specific forum. Uh, the Civic Forum uh, has provided a huge degree of support uh, to all those uh, people interested in homelessness, uh, interested in addiction issues. And I think that it is timely uh, that the Civic Forum also addresses the issue of food poverty and uh, and the difficulties associated with the cost of living uh, at this time. Uh, the SDLP believe very much in the fact that good nutrition is important to good healthy lifestyles and uh, we know that that good nutrition is valuable to people uh, across all age groups uh, and that's why uh, it, it is concerning that we hear uh, all now too often about the reliance on food banks uh, by so many of our citizens and that was highlighted in the report uh, quoted in the in the notice of motion in relation to uh, the University of Leeds studying and publishing uh, through the which magazine the difficulties that uh, that the lack of nutrition is having for, for citizens and, and the difficulties that that will have uh, for people in the longer uh, in the longer term, we know the health service is under pressure. Uh, not having adequate food is going to lead to further pressure on the health service in due course. Um, I'm also keenly aware, Mayor, that in this uh, crisis. Um, People previously uh, would have talked about the, the difficulties between choosing between 
18 and 18. And I think that if it's a stark uh, indictment of where we're at uh, at the moment, that people now are also facing choices about how much to heat their food that they have to cook and the difficulties that people have to make in, in, in making those choices. Uh, I think that through the Civic Forum, we can hear from people like Shauna McCafferty or, or Shauna McIrfire, as she's been better known on social media, who has been excellent at encouraging people, uh, not just here in our council area, but right across uh, on social media, reaching uh, a, a, an audience in different ways, uh, encouraging them how to heat their food at as cheaply uh, as possible. And I think that that's the type of uh, the, the situation when, as I said, that's a stark uh, indication of the difficulties that people are facing at this time. Uh, I hope that this motion is approved and we can see the Civic Forum convened as soon as possible. I am conscious that Christmas is coming up and uh, therefore uh, lots of people are generous with their donations and and available to, to, to provide assistance to people. But I know and I'm sure all elected members here would appreciate that as we enter into the colder nights and the, and the darker evenings, that will run through uh, throughout winter. Uh, I, I'm not precious as to when this civic forum meeting can be convened. I would hope it can be convened before Christmas, but but if not, I know that we will still be facing difficulties in January and February um, and beyond. And I think that that's why uh, the, the the civic forum would allow an opportunity for all the groups right across this council area. Uh, in my own um, position in terms of the likes of the Waterside Neighbourhood Partnership, I get to see the good work that happens in the Waterside. I've spoken to uh, the food bank uh, managers in, in uh, the BT48 area. I know that there's lots of good work that happens in uh, in the Straban area and across the council area. Uh, so I think that bringing all of those organisations together, including the supermarkets, who can determine how best they can ensure that their food uh, is being distributed uh, to the food banks and ensuring that the likes of the public health agency who have opportunities and and, uh, and talents to bring to the table as well, that we can provide some assistance to people uh, in making sure that they're getting all of the services and advice that's available to them. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Um, Councillor McGinley. Mayor, and thank you to Councillor Riley for bringing this motion forward. Um, Sinn Féin's fully in support, and I'm not going to rehearse everything that Councillor Riley has laid out. He's laid it out very, very clearly, and the reasoning for this motion. Um, the only thing I would ask is that it's noted the pressures of the food banks are under, um, and it's, some, it's a comment that's been made before is that they, sometimes they don't have time to attend meetings. Um, so it's to make sure that we're working with them. You know, they're they're putting out pleas for volunteers at the minute so that they can meet the demand that, that is on them, which is an indictment on the situation that we're in at the minute. Um, but it's just to make sure that they don't feel further under pressure to be in attendance at meetings when the needs of the people need to be coming first. Um, but Sinn Féin's in support of the motion in full. Kermega. Thank you, Councillor McKinley. Um, Councillor McKinley. Thank you, Mayor. It's just really to say that uh, we've sort of known for too long about poor nutrition and how it affects our citizens and leads to poor health and low self esteem. So, this motion is a move in the right direction to help our citizens get through the crisis. We will support it. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Knight. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Uh, people before profit are happy to support this motion. Um, I think, um, you know, food and nutrition is like something that, you know, is an existing issue, but I think it's gotten worse with the cost of living crisis, as, as Councillor Riley um, described. Um, I think, you know, Councillor McGinley had said about the food banks being overwhelmed, and unfortunately that is the case, and, um, and people having to make choices about uh, skipping meals about how they heat their food, you know, it's really just not acceptable in this day and age. And I think that's why it's very, very important that, you know, we need to draw a line about what we accept uh, in our society. And it's really important that people, you know, come out to the protest that's happening on Saturday that the Dairy Trade Union Council are calling at half one on the Guildhall Square. And, you know, we see countless workers and many uh, 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 workplaces uh, having to rely on food banks despite having full time uh, wages, and again, that's uh, you know it's very welcome to see um, the the strikes that are happening to uh, get um, above inflation pay increases. Um, I, I think it's good that we're inviting supermarkets to this, but I think supermarkets in a way are are part of the issue of uh, of. Um, 
uh, corporate uh, price gouging, like the supermarkets made millions in profits over the pandemic. Um, and the 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 way that we um, sell and market food through that corporate model, you know, needs to be looked at as well. And we we you know, hopefully through this civic forum, we can look at supporting um, you know uh, farmers markets and uh, that more direct access to uh, local produce because it's something that our agricultural model doesn't currently support or uh, incentivize um, that direct access where you would skip out that corporate supermarket who whose only intent is to um, make profit uh, from the farmer and from the consumer. Um, so we're happy to support the motion and we look forward to, to the Civic Forum. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Neil. Um, Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Mayor, for allowing me in. And we have no problem in supporting that, the notice of motion um, brought forward here um, this evening. And look, nutrition is important for our stable food diet. And it's very, very important, Mayor, that, uh, that uh, you know, the food that people are buying of, uh, is of good quality and of high standards. And that's a process for our shops and supermarkets that need to be looked at uh, and around that. And you know, the previous speaker talked about supermarkets making millions and stuff like that there. Uh, probably a valid point, but at the end of the day, Mayor, we, we support their motion. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Devaney, and um, thank you, Councillor Reilly, for bringing the motion. I have no further speakers, but just we have had a conversation in relation to it, and it does tie in with a lot of the work that I've been doing in terms of the Mayor's initiative around cost of living. Um, I have been meeting with um, a number of the food, well, the food bank and with um, neighbourhood partnerships, advice agencies in terms of what is being provided in communities, what is needed within communities and have been out with the food bank and will be volunteering again with them over the Christmas period. Um, and I think as um, Councillor McGinley has pointed out, one of the things that the food bank has asked that I highlight is the need that for volunteers over the Christmas period. They are receiving donations. They always need more, particularly treats they're asking for, but in relation to packing goods to get them out for Christmas, they have a, a huge appeal for volunteers to come and help. So if anybody wishes to give their time, I would encourage it. Um, I had intended myself to bring together um, groups, but I think that it probably is a good idea to bring it together on the auspices of the Civic Forum and maybe have a specific Civic Forum around this. But thank you um, to Councillor McGinley for bringing the, the motion up. I'm going to pass back to you now um, to sum up. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor, for, for that, and thanks to all the elected representatives who spoke in relation to it today. Uh, I appreciate your own comments, Mayor, in relation to what can be done, and that's already what I had in the third paragraph of the motion you were talking about, the Council using its website, using its social media channels to get information out there to support the food banks right across the council area. Um, I agree wholeheartedly with the point Councillor McGinley has made about making sure that we, this is not an, uh, a burden on the food banks at what is a very difficult time of the year for them. Uh, and that's why I think it, it, it is important that that we look at the civic forum as a means for networking, that those food banks can talk to each other and talk to civic society about what uh, where the pressure points are what needs to be done and how council can best help. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks to all those who spoke in the debate. Thank you, Councillor Riley. And again, I believe that that motion is unanimous. So good stuff. Um, moving on to the next motion, which is Councillor McGuire. Can I get this one in? Have you a seconder for your motion? Councillor McHugh, thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. I take the motion as read. Um, the A5 scheme is a vital infrastructure project. It has been recognised as an executive flag flagship project in the Fresh Start Agreement in 2015, and most recently in the New Decade, New Approach. The long anticipated upgrade will allow for 85 kilometres of dual carriageway from new buildings through to Athenacloy. This would improve connectivity to the region while ensuring that local people have better access to opportunities like education, training, and employment. It will enhance social inclusion by improving access to services and by better connecting communities. Above all else, the A5 upgrade is needed to save lives. The A5 transport corridor, as it stands, is not fit for purpose. With a significant portion of the road being below modern road standards, the Department for Infrastructure has projected that the new upgrade 
could prevent 2,877 casualties and 19 fatalities over the next 60 years. However, when you consider the number of people who have lost their lives on this road in recent memory, this could be understating the positive impact that upgrading this road will have regarding road safety. The recent accidents and fatalities on the road have left families and local communities utterly devastated. It is clear that the A5 upgrade is fundamental for improving road safety as well as transforming the economic fortunes of the entire Northwest region alongside tackling the current regional imbalance. The majority of people want to see the delivery of the A5 without any further delays. However, this has been disproportionately misrepresented at the most recent inquiry. The number of objections submitted to the inquiry vastly outnumbered those in support of the A5 upgrade. It is deeply frustrating that a small minority of objectors known as the Alternative A5 Alliance are still determined to object to the scheme. It is vitally important that members of the public attend the inquiry to reflect the views of the majority of people in this area who want to see the delivery of the A5 upgrade. I would therefore appeal to all those who want to see the A5 road upgraded, make a contribution to the inquiry and help deliver this vital piece of infrastructure for our local economy and ultimately to save lives in the long term. If you are not unable to attend in person, you can make a written submission to info at pacni.gov.uk. We should encourage members of the public, local businesses and organisations to make a written or oral submission to the public inquiry. Along with Fermanagh and Oma District Council, our own council, Darian Strabane, should participate in the reconvened public inquiry. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGuire. Um, Councillor McKinney. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Kieran covered it very well there, and there's not really a lot more I can add to that, except at the minute we feel as if we're going, we're on the committee for A5 uh, between the different councils. And at the minute, it seems we're just going around in circles. So, uh, same as Kieran, I would appeal to everybody in the council to fully support the A5 and try and get it moving again. Although there is another uh, another uh, inquiry again, starting soon again, right? And you know, it, it's 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 a link between ourselves and the rest of the island, really. You know, uh, from a Holly's point of view, it costs an arm and a leg to keep sending lorries from Derry, London Derry down to uh, Belfast, but uh, down to Dublin via Belfast, down to the port. It is the main port, and nearly everything that we were, we eat, comes in through Dublin port or Belfast port, and a bit through Larne. You know, so it's important that we support it. We need to get in there, and we need to, need to show people that we want this A5 built. You know, so, that, and we will support it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McKinney. Um, Councillor Edwards online. Mayor, thank you very much and thank Councillor McGuire for bringing the motion. And uh, like Councillor McKinney also said on the A5 working group, Mayor, speak on behalf of the STLP and we're um, happy to support this uh, motion as we're completely behind the A5 scheme. Um, for me, the, the A5 is the single most important road, great road upgrade on uh, this island. It'll save countless lives, increase connectivity to the northwest and bring uh, an important economic boost um, and, a, and a much needed job creation to the local area. Uh, the level of, of deaths along the A5 has been staggering uh, since the scheme was announced back, I think, in 2006. Um, there's been around 50 deaths on the road um, and there's been hundreds uh, of collisions and, and thousands of injuries. And as Councillor McGuire outlined there, it will prevent uh, thousands of collisions and, and save 19 lives, importantly, over the, over the a 60 year period. Um, Mayor, I have attended uh, the funerals uh, of people who have passed away along the A5, especially those from the Straban area. Um, I've stood at the graves um, of those, I've, I've, I've stood with the families, and, and there's a, a massive consensus out there among uh, those families that are lost people that this road uh, needs to be delivered. Um, they're looking for action on it, um, which has been lagging to, to date. Um, I live along the A5, Mayor. Um, I travel on it daily. Um, it is It is a so so hazardous um and, and driving even for straban to domer bali golly um you, you can see like multiple near misses and, and collision it is really really bad and that's why i've urged 
um, the minister before he left office and now the permanent secretary of the department to make those much needed uh, safety upgrades to the current day five until we get the the day five uh, upgraded. On the final point, Chair, um, I agree with the motion, uh, especially in the pre-inquiry meeting um, in OMA, um, where I've been contacted about um, the alternative A5 alliance, um, sort of taking over proceedings there, which is which is very concerning. I, I think personally that it's an absolute disgrace that the alternative A5 alliance has been allowed to delay and disrupt uh, advancing A5 for so long. And their latest request for a delay to the inquiry has seemingly been successful. And this is a major area of concern for the SDLP. Um, Mayor, the, the message to the PAC needs to be clear, and that is that the vast majority of people support the, the full delivery of the A5 Western Transport Corridor as soon as, as possible. Um, and also, Mayor, and final note that the SDLP do urge full public engagement um, with the process around the inquiry um, and call the supporters of the scheme to rally in support of this important development for the northwest and west of this island. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, um, Conservatives. Um, Alderman Kerrigan. Thank you very much, Mayor, for allowing me in. Uh, and again, uh, our party's position is, is uh, in support of this A5 upgrade. Um, and again, uh, main factor I see here, it's, it's, uh, it's the infrastructure end of things. Uh, we've got to get, uh, as the man would say, those white vans out uh, in the morning. Uh, and when you have a large infrastructure project, Hopefully, it's a potential of a kickstart to the economy, um, and and getting that in, and where the, the shop that they stop at for hot food and everything else, and it gets everything else moving. So those large infrastructure projects such as this uh, is a factor that that uh, again we can uh, see the benefit of it. We can see the benefit of it. Um, so uh, again, that's the thing. Uh, in regards to to um, uh, uh, mind that I try to be as, as delicate here and as sensitive a, as I can here in regards to uh, fatalities and, and casualties on the road because it's it's uh, it's a tragedy when, when people are lost in such in such a manner and and uh, I I have been at houses I I have known how it uh, how it affects people and and see that and it's it's devastating um but it is is the case that 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 you know a lot of the accidents that are occurred are, are uh, driver air uh, and, and road conditions uh, and as regards to weather conditions and, and speed and so a lot of the, the incidents uh, I'm not just I'm not correlating that exactly but you, you know where I'm coming from and again I know I have uh, you know you know I, I've had accidents myself and to be just for every one of them it's my own fault you know but I, I, again so pushing on that one uh, yes it will um, uh, an improved road will be a benefit there, and again, it's the connectivity. It's opening up uh, into West Tyrone in particular. Um, but again, one of the things that I feel is it can be improved. The, the sections should be able to push ahead in regards to the Ochnacloy Toma and in regards to the Stavan to new buildings, and that is the fact that it's going to new buildings. It's not necessarily going to the city. There still needs to be something done there in regards to the city and regards to. That there's not a bottleneck coming onto the Craig Avon Bridge, but that's a conversation for another day. Um, but the main factor I have is that issue in regards to uh, Oma to Stavan, uh, and that's where there seems to be a lot of issues. Which I'm still getting on the ground from from uh, that agricultural community, and that community have to be properly uh, adhered to and listened to because I mean you have generations of farms there being ripped apart ripped apart. You have a large agricultural vein there down by outside Newton Stewart. A lot of dairymen uh, and I'm referencing that in milk cows, uh, not in regards to London dairy. Uh, uh, and, you know, that's you can't work them with a dual carriageway down the middle of a farm. You know, you can't walk milk cows across a dual carriageway. You, you know, so there's got to be a lot of proper, and, and given the price of land, particularly in that uh, in West Tyrone at the moment, there's got to be the correct level of compensation given to these farms that are up to parts so that people won't be able to carry on their livelihood anymore. And those things have got Alderman to be factored Kerrigan, out. can you bring your remarks yeah, to close? I, I, will, I will, surely, Mayor. So again, the, the party's position is that we support the road and therefore we will, but we do have to take on board. There are serious concerns by people on the ground as well. So, uh, but uh, we will support the motion. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, Alderman Kerrigan. Thank you for that contribution. Um, Moving on to Alderman McCready. Thank you. Madam Mayor, thank you. 
I will su support the motion. And you know, many, many aspects of this has been discussed in great detail. Um, probably notably from M Member Edwards, um, who articulated you know the realities of the fatalities that you know when we use numbers uh, or statistics, it can be quite old and, and removed from the reality. So I'm thankful uh, for for Member Edwards to to articulate that and remind us all of of the priority of needs and to preserve life uh, as best we can. And I, I recently uh, I actually seen you at the Gelton on Saturday past where we attended a road Are safety event. Day? Uh, you know, laid on by uh, life after. No, I wasn't. I'll just wait there. Cheryl, I think you're ours. Right, uh, hang on. Somebody's on. Uh, Hi, sir. Or... Your your mic is on. <laughs> Madam, are you happy for me to continue? Okay, if we just got a wee bit of order now, and Councillor Kiar seems to have his mic back off. So, um, Alderman Alderman McCready, over to you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, and you know, I accept the, the levity in that, and I'll, I'll probably steal that for YouTube and, uh, and make a joke. Uh, however, I just back into to that point where I left off was you know I recently seen you at an event at the Guild Hall. It was laid on by Life After on a road safety event, and it's things like that that bring it all home. So when us as politicians are making uh, decisions like this to support or or go against major infrastructure, then you can see the reality of it. And you know, I suppose the, the support in itself to to the safety upgrades that can be done now, that's certainly something we can support. And and even in concurrent to the legal challenges and all the other aspects is ongoing, then you, you can phase this as it goes. You know, members have outlaid you know different segments that can can happen now. That's one that would we should start to to promote and to lobby uh, the department to, to fund it and get on with it. And and, and I suppose lastly, is I've had recent conversations on, on the, the A6. We as a as a government, and I say we collectively, um, you know, notably in departments, we can't even deliver to finalize the A6, but yet we're going to try and, you know, raise expectations that we're going to get the A5 upgrade in some form of order. And I do recount, um, but the, the then minister or the temporary minister that was put in place and and he was optimistic about the A6 and and whilst I know he's no longer in post, but I just want to manage expectations for people out there that yes, we can support this, but until it is budgeted, signed off and then being delivered in phases, this is not a reality. And until that's not a reality, we'll continue to incur a regrettably fatalities on that road. And so we have, we have to be Mr. McCready or Alderman McCready, could you bring your remarks to a close? I'll draw a line there. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman McCready. Um, Councillor Harkin. Thank you, Mayor. We're happy to support the motion. Look, Derry is the fourth biggest city on this island, but our infrastructure is an absolute disgrace. And this road should have been uh, fixed decades ago, and we're still having the campaign on it right now. There's been far too many fatalities in this road. I go to Dublin quite a bit, and I hate driving down the A5. There's some sections of it are fine, but lots of sections are too narrow, too dark, and are dangerous, um, especially at night. So this is something we want to see progressed. Uh, but we also think that uh, this discussion has to happen uh, along with rail development. We can all see the benefits of having a direct dairy to Dublin train service. Three and a half hours for the FAI Cup final. I think everybody agreed it was absolutely brilliant. Uh, and people can see the enthusiasm as well for the opening of the Northwest Rail Corridor with the end of the West uh, campaign, happened in, which happened in Derry, uh, PAC meeting in Derry, PAC meeting in Dungannon, PAC meeting in, in Oma, PAC meeting in uh, Strabane. Uh, so there's a lot of momentum as well behind rail. So we don't think this is an either or. Discussion. We think our, our roads need to be developed uh, so that they're first class, and we think we need a first class all Ireland train service as well. So we're happy to support this motion on that basis. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harkin. And um, I have no further speakers on the motion. So, Councillor McGuire, if you wish to sum up. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to thank everyone for uh, supporting the motion. Um, just notwithstanding the economic uh, factors, 
with the upgrade of the A5, you know, there is uh, there is the, the, the tragic stories that come behind it, notwithstanding uh, we all heard the three fatalities last December and uh, just a couple of weeks ago, young John Rafferty from Kelly Clogher and uh, all that went before and in between. So um, I just want to implore everybody not to sit idly by and do everything that they can and do everything this council can to uh, get the submissions in and get our shoulder to the wheel and try and get the, this A5 up and running. Okay, I do think that that was unanimous, um, but I'll just leave it hanging in the air for a second. Yeah, okay, that was unanimous. Thank you, um, Councillor McGuire. Um, folks, the guilt hall has just chimed six o'clock. We agreed that we would do today's meeting to six o'clock. Now, if there had been a chance that we would be finishing the next half hour, I might be tempted to go on, but I don't think we will. We still have three motions that will probably um, have significant debate. And I know that a number of us have another uh, event at seven o'clock that we're keen to get to. So on that note, I will suspend the meeting and reconvene tomorrow at two o'clock. So thank you. For your patience. My apologies be given, Mayor. Could my apologies be given for tomorrow?